written in the script right before the holidays, and so got some really great feedback in, in early January, and now working on the second draft. And meanwhile, we're starting to build models, starting to build characters, and and the uh, uh, the production designers beginning to design the the worlds that we're going to be going into. So, really exciting. It's all very early. It continues the story from the first film, so it's really its own storyline. Everybody, the the entire cast has returned, so it's really nice. Gerard was the last one to sign on, and he, and he just did. That's Fuji camera. It's the only one of its kind, really. Uh, although I think a lot of people are following. This is a wonderful, wonderful toy, you know, I, I take it everywhere. Um, I've been interested in stereo all my life, 3D, you know, from the age of about seven. Uh, I was fascinated in, in what happens with our two eyes, why do we have two eyes, you know, and why don't we use them in, in terms of normal photography. So I've always had a passion for this, and I've been a kind of evangelist for 3D, I suppose, but now I don't need to be, because thanks to, to James Cameron and Avatar and all these wonderful people, Pixar, and, um, it's become something which is in people's lives forever now, I think. Well, old 3D is really not 1950s, but 1850s. That's when it was invented. 3D goes back to the dawn of photography itself. And um, what I've done, I, I wrote a book on this, uh, on a particular series of 1850s pictures, and I had to create a stereoscope to go with them. Now, a stereoscope is nothing to do with red and green and nothing to do with... Uh, Polaroid or whatever on, on the screen. It's just presenting each eye with one picture in a little uh, in a box, and it's still the greatest stereo experience you can have, really. Um, so I've been trying to bring that into the 21st century, and I, I, I wrote a book called uh, A Village Lost and Found, which enables you to do this, to experience stereo as it was in the 1850s. Oh, am I always successful? No, no, I've had my failures. And uh, those are the things that make you grow, I suppose. You know, no, I guess you only see the successes, you know. But I work hard. I love to work. I love to create things. And I like, you know, we only have one life. I like to make full use of it and explore every avenue that I can. can. I've been very lucky that I've been able to do that. Well, I've had downtime too, you know. I've had periods of real uh, inactivity and depression, you know, because you can't work if you're depressed. And I think... The thing that keeps you going is that little light at the end of the tunnel which tells you that everything will change and uh, everything, is, everything is what you make it in the end. You just have to be very, very patient and you have to believe that there will be a way out into the future. So I've been in many of those places. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right now, but I'm not always all right. You know, that's the way life is.